So let's look at the most prominent type of cavitation, and it, it is responsible for about 70% of all cavitation. It's called classic cavitation, or vaporization cavitation, or inadequate NPSH cavitation. Now vaporization cavitation, it's about 70% of all cavitation, results from high velocity, that means high speed, high flow, and inadequate available energy. These are the conditions present in the pump when the pump is running to the right of best efficiency on the performance curve. And these conditions are exaggerated with heat. So <clears throat> this is your best efficiency zone on the pump curve. We take even the smallest impeller, then this is the best efficiency for the smallest impeller. Although it's not stellar efficiency, it's only 50% on this line right here, 50%. But it is the best efficiency if you put a 6-inch impeller inside of a 10-inch housing. Now, if we're running with the largest impeller, then we take the very best efficiency and the second or third efficiency arc. So we're calling this the best efficiency here, and then we're certainly within the primary arc of efficiency down here at the bottom end. So for whatever impeller you might be running, this would be, let's say you're running the 8-inch right in here, then that would be for that flow at that head. You're running the 10-inch would be for that flow at that head. So this is your best efficiency zone, and then allowing the pump to run out here is the classic cavitation zone. Now, what would make a pump drift from here out to here on the curve? Let's just give some reasons. What would make a pump drift out to there on the curve? <coughs> give me a practical, a practical cause or reason or factor that might happen every day. Trying to load the rail car faster with the design tool. Yeah. We've got a big order from a really good customer who has already paid us, and they're saying, get me that order right now. It's got to leave the plant today. So the process engineer says to the operators, open those valves wide open and run those pumps out on the curb because instead of filling that pump at 600 gallons, instead of filling that tank car at 600 gallons a minute, we're going to fill that tank car at 850 gallons a minute. So you simply open all the valves and the pump's going to run out there on the curve. What else might cause the pump to run out there on the curve? All right, let's, let's go back to something that we were doing earlier today. You remember playing with the buckets that often, let's say I'm going to drain this vessel and I'm going to fill this vessel. So I have an elevation differential across my system. And I must respect a certain elevation differential. If the elevation differential increases, it drags the pump back to here and then there comes a point where if the elevation differential is too great, we actually drive, drag the pump to shut off. What happens if somebody drains the discharge vessel way down, or somebody fills the suction vessel way up? What's happening to my elevation differential? You're losing differential, and the pump is going to slide out to the right on the curve. Okay. Maybe I'm pumping onto a pressurized header pipe and a safety valve blows off on my pressurized header pipe. So we lose all my pressure and all my resistance on that header. The pump's going to slam out to there on the curve. So let's take a let's, let's look at what we've so far have we considered. Uh, process or sales demands that we run that pump at 900 gallons a minute then the pump goes out to there on the curve. Then if it tears up the bearings and the seal by tomorrow morning, who should pay for the repair? Is that a maintenance problem or is that a production, cost of production, cost of sales? See, these, see, these little arguments make people pay attention to you. You raise that one. Because that natural tendency is, well, somebody screwed up a mechanical seal when they install it, so we've got a seal failure today. Maybe that's not why the seal failed. All right, so then we're operating the pump, and we need to respect a pressure differential, <coughs> an elevation differential across the system. 
I can fill the suction tank up to here. I can drain the discharge tank there. What happens if I fill my suction tank and drain the discharge tank at the same time? Pump's going to move out to there on the curve. Then that would be an operations failure. It's not a maintenance, and it's not designed. Somebody's not watching. This is like driving a car with the gasoline gauge getting closer and closer to E, but the driver is not paying attention to the gauge. He's trying to drive to Montgomery, and he's not paying attention to the gauge, and then suddenly it gets too close to E, and the car shuts down. And that's not a problem with the car. That's a problem with operation of the car. And then you might have what we might call a system upset. You blow off a safety valve on a pressurized header, and the pump slams out to there on the curve. So that might be a system upset. And all of these would drag the pump out to there on the curve. And we've got to look at that and say, what dragged the pump out to there on the curve? Then who needs to pay for it? And where do we need to, what do we need to do to prevent this from happening again? This is reliability. 